Alrighty, a uh, new video. This one is was a suggestion made by a subscriber. His name is Fat Bastard Fifty One. He said you should check out Baby Reindeer that's currently trending on the internet. The interview with Piers Morgan with real life Martha. Thank you so much, Fat Bastard. Honestly, like, actually, this gives me an idea, right? So if anybody has any suggestion that they want to make, I'm you know I'm always scouring the internet looking for stuff to react to, to give commentary to. These types of comments are greatly, greatly appreciated. So thank you so much. We are going to do, because of you, this video is now happening. So thank you so much for the suggestion. So this is a interview from Piers Morgan. Tell you what I do, as I go and check out some basic facts about your hero, Obama. He's not my hero, I'm how a heroic communist, he idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just, I'm gonna have to keep checking this thing. It's, I gotta update my tech, man. I've had to like re-record this a couple times. <laughs> it's an interview by Piers Morgan about a... It's an interview with somebody uh, where this Netflix show was uh, sort of like replicating the likeness of this character and people found out who this character was and they found the real person and it's caused a bunch of issues. So now he's just, I guess, trying to figure out what's going on. So um, it's about this... Or it's regarding this show on Netflix which just came out and it's actually a very, very successful show. It's called Baby Reindeer. So I'm guessing it was like there's this lady, she was a stalker or something, or according to the show, which the show says based on, or just is, this is a true story. So I'm guessing Piers Morgan is just here trying to interview the person to get their side of it or something. I saw, I don't know too much about the show, so I'm going in completely dry and we're just going to judge based on the information presented in this video. I'm going to, I saw the, I saw the trailer about a few weeks ago. Link down below if you want to watch that. And there are some pretty decent reviews of the show, so might as well give it a watch, yeah? Without further ado, we're just going to jump right into it. I'm going to put this on a little bit faster speed until I upgrade the tech to be able to, you know, have a very long uh, video recording session. So um, we're going to just go for as long as uh, my fucking gear is going to allow me, and I'm going to upgrade as I go along. I got a new light, so that's cool. Yeah, let's just jump right into it. Again, any future comments, feel free to leave some suggestions. I am totally open to all that stuff. Thank you so much, Fat Bastard 51 This video is happening because of you. Thank you for watching. All right, let's get to it. This show is incredible. Baby reindeer. He got absolutely obsessed. My beef curtain. I did not move. Everybody is talking about baby reindeer. Now fans are trying to find the real people behind the story. Because it doesn't depict real life events. It's blown up so quickly and so fast all around the world that I, <laughs> I didn't expect it. First of all, why have you decided to go public? When did you know that you were the person being depicted? He says the whole thing started because he felt sorry for you. Have you ever been to prison? What do you feel about Richard Gatt? You think he's mentally unwell? Did you ever turn up at his house? Would you accept that someone who did that would be very obsessive about something? Here's the thing. I don't know the truth. You do. You look down the barrel of that camera. To people who still doubt you, what do you say to them? One of the first things that viewers of Baby Reindeer are told by Netflix is that this is a true story. Not based on a true story or inspired by real events, but a true story. It's emphatic about that. The show's writer, comedian Richard Gadd, even plays the lead role himself. Many millions of people across the world have now seen it. It's one of the biggest Netflix shows of the year. And I've watched it all. It's a riveting. Huh. The guy who wrote it and created it is also the lead? I don't have a problem with that. It's just interesting. I guess he's really, you know, hitting close to home, huh? My goodness. And based on a true story, that's, that's like all your marbles on the table right there. With that, it isn't based on a true story. It's not inspired by... It, it, this is a true story. Yeah, that, that carries considerably much more weight. Yeah, let's see what happened. It appears that nothing too great happened as a result of that, so... <laughs> Emotionally intense drama worthy of all the critical plaudits it's now receiving. Viewers are gripped by the apparently real-life struggle of a fledgling stand-up comedian who is mercilessly stalked by an older woman, Martha, in a three-year onslaught of harassment. Martha bombards him with tens of thousands of lurid emails, leaving hundreds of voicemails, lurking outside his house, attacking his partner, even confronting his family and friends. Now, Richard Gadd said that he and Netflix had gone to such great lengths to disguise Martha's real identity that she wouldn't even recognise herself. But that wasn't true. Many people did recognise her very quickly. And the woman at the centre of the story was outed online within hours simply by cross-referencing her posts on social media with those that were used in the show. Other details about her character bear a striking, unavoidable similarity with the real woman now accused of being the crazed stalker Martha. The show raises uncomfortable questions about the line between fact and... Wow, within hours. Oh my goodness, dude. <laughs> dude, the internet is... Like, you put anything out there, people are gonna figure it out. That That's insane. With that comes... A, should come a mindset where it's like, you just gotta accept, man. Except that people are going to try to figure out what's going on. So the best that you think that you can do is just equip yourself. Prepare for if slash when that type of stuff happens. Especially when stuff gets this popular super goddamn quickly. Because, what, this video has nearly 10 million views in a single day? That's fucking crazy. All of the stuff surrounding the subject matter of the, the show is clearly, like, is is 
further exacerbating the uh, the popularity of the show. And a bunch of stuff is always going to come as a result of that. You kind of just got to accept. And I guess this is the fallout. Who he's interviewing right now? Baby Reindeer's real Martha Fiona Harvey. Yeah, dude, that's your entire name right there. <laughs> On the Piers Morgan Show, which this video had nearly 10 million views in a single day. Oh my God. God damn. People are going to figure it out, man. Fiction, fantasy, and reality. Another innocent man in the television industry has been falsely accused of sexual assault based on one of the storylines in the drama. Well, Fiona Harvey is the woman outed as the real Martha of Baby Reindeer. She's chosen to confirm her identity because she wants to have a right of reply. And so, in her first television interview, she joins me now in the studio. Well, uh, But also might as well, right? It's already out there. There's nothing you can do about it. People are going to do whatever the hell they want with this information. Just accept and embrace and then exploit. That's the beauty of life. Right? I mean, she's already kind of doing that right now. I'm not taking sides one way or the other. I'm just going to judge based on the information that's presented here. But run with it, man. Find a way to allow it to benefit you. It's acted as a detriment to your life for, for however long you've been faced with this for. So just take it, pull it close to your heart, and then try to get something out of it that can benefit you. Find a way to monetize this situation. Find a way to use that attention. Go on as many interviews as you can, man. Get yourself out there. Get your name known. Might as well create a career as a result of this other guy creating a career. Uh, you know, for himself at your expense. I mean, clearly it's at your expense if, if like, you know, the similarity. I, mean, I saw the trailer. The lady somewhat looks similar to this lady. And I, I, that's all the information I have is just the way that she looks. But like, if it, if it skyrocketed him and it's skyrocketing you by proxy, might as well just fucking take it, man. Run with it, dude. Get as much out of it as you can. Thank you for joining me, Fiona. Um, first of all, why have you decided to go public? The internet sleuths tracked me down and hounded me and gave me death threats, so it wasn't really a choice. I was forced into this situation. What do you hope to achieve in this interview? I came on your show because you're a veteran broadcaster. I think you'll give me a fair hearing. Um, you were persecuted yourself not so long ago. Um, so that's why I've chosen this show. Have you Pierce Morgan's always getting persecuted. <laughs> He's always getting just demolished by other people, both on his show and off the show. A lot of people don't like this guy. Uh, I like the questions that he asked in his show. I also like his, uh, again, take it with a grain of salt. I only know so much. I've seen plenty of video, like dozens and dozens of Piers Morgan videos. I like some of his journalistic qualities. Take that with a heavy grain of salt. I only know so much. <laughs> but from what I've seen, I like the way he's like, just takes it. Just fucking, fucking kill, let's go, kill me, kill me. I love that. that. That's the attitude you should have. Dude, take it right in the face, man. Like, fight back. <laughs> Let it be known. You watched the drama? Not at all. I've heard about the court scene, about the jail sentences and all this sort of stuff. But you I've really heard... haven't watched any of it? I haven't watched any of it. You're not curious to? Uh, no, I think I'd be sick. Um, it's taken over enough of my life. I find it quite obscene. I find it horrifying, misogynistic. Some of the death threats have been really terrible online. People phoning me up. You know, it's, it's been absolutely... I don't... Like, you're already in the hot seat. You're already showing your face. Dude, pull the bandit off. Take, like, just accept. And then, not just that, but, like, especially if someone's accusing you of something, like, make yourself as knowledgeable as possible. Figure out everything that they're saying about you. Try to get to the bottom of everything and then use it. Understand it. And then take advantage. You're, you're, you have the balls to show up on, the, on an interview and show your face and talk about your story, but you don't have the, the balls to be able to watch the show? How do you know what's being the, the accusations that are being levied against you in the show? Because clearly you can use that as your, your groundwork, seeing as the show says this is a true story. You get death threats, you get all this other stuff. Dude, you're already in the, in the fucking shit, man. Dude, swing. Swing until you're, you're taken down. If you're... Don't keep yourself ignorant if this is the stuff that's being applied to you, especially if, like it results in you being known for this really bad thing all around the world, or at least in the, the scope that is, uh, encompasses all the people who are aware of the show and know of, the, of all the things surrounding it. Like, dude, you gotta make yourself equipped. You gotta know what's going on. You gotta react properly. There, there's no other choice. People are gonna drag you into this shit. And clearly you, you're somewhat reciprocal seeing as you're jumping on this show and giving your peace. Might as well learn everything you can about it. All the stuff that people are saying about it, the show itself, the context to the show, everything that the show alludes to, everything. Figure it all out, man. You got you got to fight back. Now, I don't know one way or the other. I don't know one way or the other if it's right or wrong. I'm just judging based on what I see here, the information that I'm being presented with right here. But based off of that, it's like, dude, you got to you got to you got to pull your guns together. You got to load yourself up. You got to rearm. Oh, some misogynistic? I haven't seen the show, but like how is it how is how is the woman the victim if the woman's the guy victimizing the guy? Isn't that what the show's about? A stalker who's like crazy, who gets, falls in love with this guy and then just follows him around and ruins his life or something. How are, how is that misogynistic? Is it misandrous when we talk about a guy stalker? 
don't don't get into that. You're just throwing throwing adjectives at us so that you can you know plead your case. It's been absolutely horrendous. I wouldn't give credence to something like that, and it's not really my kind of drama. What, when did you know that you were the person being depicted in this? Five years ago on BBC Breaking News, um, I saw uh, Mr Gard had written a play for the Edinburgh Festival and he was, hiding, he was holding up um, placards, MPs, wife stalker and all of this and he'd called it Baby Reindeer. That's all I knew. And I thought, well, I've only met this guy two or three times. Um, I don't know him um, and left it at that. So I should have possibly jumped it at that stage. And when did you know that Netflix were doing something? Uh, two weeks ago. I had just moved flat, so it was two weeks ago past Saturday. And how did you hear? Um, I saw on BBC Breaking News that he'd sold to Netflix and both he and this character, Martha, this Jessica actress, seemed to be promoting mercilessly. Did you think then it was you that they were depicting? Uh, I thought it was me they were depicting five years ago because of this MP's wife stalker article that had been a number done on me by the, the Sunday Mail 25 years ago when I was going for Donald Joe's parliamentary seat. So I knew, I had a vague idea then. Um, the Daily Mail then approached me on the Wednesday, um, two weeks ago. So sort of two weeks tomorrow, um, but two weeks ago, if you see what I mean. Um, and um, told me that I was getting death threats online, that I'd been out as Mar Martha, there were TikTok videos. And were you all online at all? Because you were before, but are you these days online? Uh, I, I'm, I've come off Facebook as of yesterday. Um, are you on X, what used to be Twitter? Uh, no, I'm not Because you Twitter. had an account. Yeah, that's right. Um, years and years ago. Um, I'm scared to Google up BBC Breaking News. I'm scared, certainly scared to Google up mm. the Daily Mail um, in case I am on it in some bizarre circus. You're not scared to show up on one of the most successful British TV interview shows of all time to rack up nearly 10 million views in a single day on a video that they post of your interview. Hmm. Again, I'm not trying to allude to anything. This is just stuff that I see right here. But it's like, dude, be consistent. And just, like, like grow some balls, dude. <laughs> if you're being accused of stuff, figure out exactly what's, what you're being accused of and, and try to react accordingly. I mean, you're already step one, dude. You're showing up and showing your face and you're talking about your story. That's, that's a huge step right there. But you're only willing to take a certain level, extent of a step when it comes to uh, dealing with all of these things that are being thrust upon you. It's like, dude, come on, go all in, man. That moment you realised it was you mm -hmm. that they were depicting from what you were reading. The mm -hmm. sleuths, as you say, had found your mm -hmm. tweets, they compared some of the mm -hmm. phraseology, mm -hmm. they'd done the maths and they worked out this was you that was being depicted. How did that make you feel? Absolutely horrendous. Um, absolutely horrendous. Um, I couldn't believe he'd done that. And so long after first meeting, you know, we're talking 10, 12 years ago, um, really horrendous. I didn't know who to trust. I was told by the Daily Mail, don't trust those bleep bleeps in Scotland. Uh, whereas I found John Dingwall of the Daily Record completely wonderful, actually. He's acted with total courtesy. Um, I couldn't believe this had happened. I want to play a little clip. This is just mm. some of the reaction to Baby Reindeer sure. from members of the public. She ends up becoming this the craziest stalker I've ever seen in my life. And this is all a true this, story? This is all a true story, yeah. Um, and they've found the real woman online. So not, I assume yeah. in the actual thing, they've obviously given her a different name, mm. it's a, a, a different woman, but you know what I find? They always, they always manage to find a similar looking woman and the build tends to yeah, be the same. I have a theory about this though. I feel like he's done it on purpose because he knew that people would find her and he wants to make her life yeah, hell a bit. When you hear that, what do you think? Uh, the, the final guy on there, I think is correct. I think he always wanted this to come out, to persecute someone, to take attention away from him and this rape allegation. And I just generally think he's got extreme psychiatric problems. I mean, there's no doubt he has problems. I mean, if you watch the, given that he's written it about himself, the, mm. if you watch the, the, the whole thing as I did, all five, six episodes, whatever it is, um, he has a lot of problems. He's quite open about that. The, the question, I guess, which we'll come to, is how much of the way he depicts you is true. Mm. And your position is that it's just not factual. It's a work of fiction, it's a work of hyperbole, as I've always said, and um, th there are two true facts in that. His name is Richard Gadd, and he worked as a jobbing barman on benefits um, in the Holy Arms, and we met two or three times. So th th those are the only Well, let's go facts. back to Let's go through some of these things. So, mm -hmm. you first met him, I mean, the, the show shows you coming in to a London pub, you just named the pub, and he's working behind the bar, Richard Gadd, and he offers you a cup of tea. Is that what happened? No, that's not correct. Um, he didn't offer me a cup of tea. Nobody gets anything free from the Holly Arms. Um, I was in for a meal with um, a drink of lemonade, and I was very, very hungry. I'm diabetic, so very hungry. So that, that's And did you true. talk to him? Um, he interrupted a conversation. There was another barman there. And he said, oh, you're Scottish, and basically commandeered the conversation. I, you know, I was talking to somebody. It's pretty rude to interrupt. So he seemed to be obsessed with me from that moment onwards. I mean, just speaking to you, I've never met you before, mm -hmm. but you do look and sound very similar 
to the actress in the I drama. Haven't, <laughs> haven't seen the actress. We're both Scottish. We've both got dark hair. Um, she's considerably younger than me. I think she's about 18 years younger than me. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 50. You're leaving a certain part out. I'm not going to be that guy, but um, let's just say shape. The shape of you is rather uh, consistent with what, what the show uh, says. And yes, it's like, come on. The dude says true story. He puts himself in the in the lead role. And to cast the lady who he's trying to put in a certain light, he makes her, he casts someone who looks exactly like her and, and has a lot of qualities that are very similar to her. It's like, that's very interesting. Uh, I don't really have an opinion in turn. I don't really care about that. It's like, that's fine. Do whatever you want. But it seems like this would have been inevitable, especially given like the... Uh, given the gumshoe properties of the internet, right? The detective gumshoe shit. Those guys are crazy, man. You could like take a picture of a blade of grass and somewhere and be like, hey, triangulate this location. People will do it. People will do it successfully. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy. So you kind of just got to accept, man, that when stuff's out there and you can't control the stream of stuff that is going to be presented to the, the public, you kind of just have to react accordingly. There's nothing you can really do about that. So Man up, sorry, person up. I'm trying not to be misogynistic, my bad. Uh. And just fucking go to war, man. Take it right in the face, move on, and try to find a way to benefit from it. Because it seems like it's just, it's just a lot of damage control is what she's doing right now, which sucks, sure. But I don't even know one way or the other if, if what they're saying is true or not. So let's keep going. 58, I'm a year younger than you. Mm. And I think Martha, Jessica, the actress is about 40, mm. 38, 40. It says in the show that you proceeded to return to the same pub Time and again, but you never paid for a drink. I don't drink alcohol. And did you pay for anything that you had? Uh, lemonade or soft drink. Would he give you free drinks? Or? No, absolutely not. This is sort of a depiction of me as a pauper who wouldn't stand around or stand a drink. It's nonsense. It says that you told Richard Gad that he looked like a baby reindeer. As a pauper, a very pauper. In the show, in, in the trailer, she's like a successful lawyer. I haven't seen the show. I just saw the trailer, and she says, "Hey, you know, I'm representing all these people. I make I make a lot of money. I'm very successful." That isn't that is that consistent with you? You said you were, you you had a um you you were trying to apply for a, or like qualify or like to get into a seat or become a candidate in some like political thing. The show's pretty accurate. I haven't even seen the show. And just off of the small information that I gathered from actually watching the trailer, maybe you should have get, got one out of your way to like understand it more. Buy a Netflix subscription, see the show. And, and again, link to the trailer will be in the description if you want to see what, what it's about. Um, go watch it. It seems to have pretty decent reviews or something. Might as well, right? Yeah, no, the show, they don't present you that way. Maybe I should have watched before doing this, but I wanted to jump on the bandwagon. So I'll, I'll watch it after, but still. Educate yourself, man. If 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 accusations are being levied against you, you gotta educate yourself. I'm in a different position. I'm just here giving my commentary off of this information that I'm being presented with right here. So I'm not talking about the context, right? I'm just giving you what I know, and this is all I know. This fucking this video right here. Dear toy, you once had as a child, hence the name of the show. Yeah, is that yeah. true? I, I appear I appear to have uh, written most of the show in my sleep. Um, I just um, the. Uh, Did you have a baby reindeer? I toy? had a toy reindeer. So that's true. And he shaved his head. That bit is true. Mm. And there were reindeers in the shops. It was Christmas time or something. It was a joke. So I have inadvertently penned the name of the show. Right, but that is true. That's true. That's that's true fact. Um, interesting little nuanced detail. I'm not going to allude to anything. It's just that's an interesting thing, and that seems to be specific enough for him to have to know you to a certain degree to be able to have that information or to, for that to be what he includes. Interesting. I'm just pointing it out. It doesn't... We'll see if it means something. Get to the bottom, Piers. Whilst bantering with you, Richard mm -hmm. Gadd told you he'd like to hang your curtains. Is that true? This, I think, was a holy arms joke about curtains and a lot of sexual innuendo. He did say that? Uh, yeah. OK. Is it true that you caught Richard Gadd looking through your window after he followed you home one false, day? False, false. You never saw him at your house? Um, I didn't see him at my house. I think it would be impossible to look through a window. Did anyone else ever see him there? No. So as far as you were concerned, he never turned up at your place? Correct. But, Correct. The, but the, the Netflix show has him doing that? Yes, I believe so. I believe so. I've been told that. But that categorically didn't happen? That categorically didn't happen. In the course of your relationship with Richard Gadd, you send him 41,000 emails, 350 voice messages, 744 tweets, 48 Facebook messages and 106 letters. That's simply not true. Um, if somebody was sending somebody 41,000 emails or something, they'd be doing how many a day? Lots. Well, they'd Lots. be obsessively Yeah, content, yeah, 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 absolutely not. Absolutely not. What, none what did you send true. him? No, no, that's true. I don't think I sent him anything. You never sent him anything? No. I, th I think there may have been a couple of emails exchanging, but that was it. Just jokey banter emails. Netflix, Netflix have said that these details are uh, the real ones. Mm. That this is, this is, this is exactly... completely incorrect. So you're Where denying anyone... sending 
anything to him. Uh, there may have been a couple of emails. Text messages? Uh, no. Facebook messages. But I mean, also, like, based on a true story, this is a true story, that's a marketing ploy. You can, like, it implies more, like, weight to what you're being presented with in the show. So I could see why they would just, because remember, it's just words. You can make up anything, you can get people to believe anything, that's all that matters. I've said this a few times in all my videos. The truth doesn't matter, it's what people believe to be the truth that matters, because that's enforceable. The truth, it can, you know, it can be lost, it can be misinterpreted, it can be misconstrued, all these things, but, like... In order to get people to act upon these things, right, clearly enough people believe that this is true enough to go out of their way to find out who this person is and to send them death threats or whatever the hell they do. It's like, if you do that, you're kind of a loser. It's like, come on, just watch, just witness, watch the animals kill each other. Why are you getting involved? Unless you're one of the animals as well. So that, that's lame. Uh, I can see why Netflix would want to do something like that. Money, right? You can draw attention. I mean, dude, the fact that this video has nearly 10 million views in a single day. Oh my God. Like that's excellent for publicity. All of this stuff that that saying any even any publicity is good publicity, even bad publicity or something. Absolutely true, a hundred fucking percent. What comes along with bad publicity is some degree of fallout and comeuppance. But it's like you can still monet. It's attention. At the end of the day, that is the bottom line. You can monetize that. You can make lots of money off that. You can like the guy's career is he's went from making plays and now we can fucking make Netflix t TV shows. That's insane. That's a leap. These people have, they've, if, if the goal is to get what you want, he got it. <laughs> and Netflix got what they wanted. They all benefit, everyone who, who, who's a part of this. They're all benefiting. Even I can even argue that Martha, Fiona, Harvey can benefit from it. If she finds a way to monetize it, she finds a way to get more out of it. But like people know, people are aware of this stuff and they're giving you their attention. And what comes along with that is all sorts of crazy shit. It just depends on what you do with it. And Netflix, man. Their numbers have increased exponentially. If like people are, are talking about this shit, if it's circling, circulating, that's insane, man. As to whether or not what they're saying is true or not, I mean, it seems like it's like she had some degree of a rapport, just based on what's being said, some degree of a relationship with this guy. Not, I don't know to what to, to what extent that goes to, but she it could have been an acquaintance if they're sending each other emails or at least even just a few here or there. I mean, most people in my life, I haven't sent an email to. It's either business related to people across the world or some shit, or like work related, all that stuff, which business work, it's all the same thing. But um, he has your email, you have his, if you're sending to, uh, messages back and forth. You have, he has some degree of, or context as to who you are, if you guys can create inside jokes, or if like there's something pertaining to a baby reindeer when it comes to your Christmas stuff, or your Christmas shop, or whatever. There wasn't much information in regards to that, and I don't have enough information, right? I didn't watch the show. I might check it out after this, absolutely. But interesting, there, you're getting little quips of little pieces of information right here or there that just gives people more, more stuff to like make up, to interpret in their own way. Either way, it's attention, and that's a good thing. Facebook messages? Nope. Did you tweet him? Um, I may have done years and years ago. You actually tweeted him numerous times. No, it wasn't numerous. It was about 18 tweets there or 14 It's quite tweets. a lot to someone who's not that well known. But we were all friends. You know, we, it was banter. Right, but it establishes yeah. you were contacted. That's in public. Yes, I mean, this... Uh, this Did you write him letters? Public. No. I think when I, found, when I saw the rape interview, that's actually incorrect, what I said there. When I, when I saw that in The Guardian, I said, what a shame, it's not your fault. Something you like did that. write to him. One later, one later. So tweets, emails, inside jokes. There's, to some degree, that you know this person. Very interesting. This is, yeah, this is a very interesting subject matter. Thanks, fat bastard. Goddamn. <laughs> this is interesting. One later. So you, you would say you only sent him a handful of emails. No. You never texted him. No. You tweeted him 18 times, you think. You never sent a Facebook message. Uh -huh. And you wrote in one letter. Yeah. So why have they got all these details here, which are supported? Who is they? Netflix. Who has sent all this? Correct. So, I'm sorry. Who has sent all this stuff to him? I've no idea. I think he's probably made it up himself. I mean, you could prove, I guess, quite easily it wasn't you. Correct. Because it'll be on your computer. Yeah, correct. Post. That's right. Would you be happy for someone to look at that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, yeah. What, what do you have? What technology do you use? Right, what technology do I use? A very, very old smartphone just now because the other one packed up for a week before moving. That's it. Because they're all sent from an iPhone. Yes, yeah, so... But they believe it wasn't actually an iPhone ever being used. Meaning what Meaning kind that of someone phone? was hiding the fact that they were actually not using... They, they were pretending it was from an iPhone. I don't really understand that. Well, people can mask where they're sending stuff from. OK, uh, right, I'm not technology with kid of the year. Mm. I wasn't doing that either. I mean, obviously, when you make such an emphatic denial of the mm. central point of the story, mm. you're basically accusing both him but also Netflix of lying about it. I him. am. And that's, that's pretty defamatory. It's not defamatory if it's true. No, no, it's defamatory that they've been to oh, you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I misunderstood there. Yes, exactly. 
exactly. I don't see how anyone could do 41,000 emails and all this kind of stuff, you know. I don't know how much you know about technology, but are you aware that if it was you sending those emails, it would be very easy for the police, for example, to work out exactly where they come from? The IP address yeah, would reveal yes, that. Yes, I understand that, and it stays on forever. But the point is, this was years and years ago. We were congratulating him. But it would, all st it would all still be there. Uh, yes, yes, I understand that. Yeah. And if you sent 41,000 emails... This they'll is all... just a lot of rubbish. Yeah, so that should be stored there. Well, they'd all be there. Yeah. I mean, he's got them. He's not got 41,000 emails. That's over a year. Well, according to you, there's only, there's only a handful. Take, yeah. I mean, how long would that take someone to type up? How many do you think you sent him? A handful. Like, like that. What does that mean, how many? Uh, uh, less than 10. 10 emails. Not 41,000. Right, there's a massive disparity between the yeah, two. Yeah, things. I agree, I agree. I mean, if it's not you that sent all this, then clearly Martha cannot be you. Yes, Martha cannot be me because there are. I guess, cool little piece of information. It is possible to be able to send that much, both in texts, both in emails, just in terms of spam. There's all sorts of services illegal services and businesses that are able to do those types of things. Those types of things are designed specifically just to harass and to cause problems for people. If someone were to have access to those types of things or to be able to do it, it really wouldn't be that difficult. Um, now don't go out of your way to look at that stuff. Don't try to find that type of thing. Um, it's just, it's, it's crazy, especially nowadays as, as time moves forward. There are way more nuanced and more specific and more accessible ways to mask those types of things. It's crazy, dude. It's just ways that people make money. They're just trying to find ways. They're, dude, there was this tax service. I forgot what it was. You're able to like pay a certain like monthly subscription and to be able to just send somebody joke texts or joke voicemails or something where it's like the sound of Chewbacca making like a, a raw sound. All right, there's <laughs> the entire service is dedicated to just stuff like that. Just troll posting shit, that type of stuff. It's, it's crazy. So, um. But I'm not sure when this took place. Uh, it clearly was definitely years ago. Still, it's, um, yeah, humans are crazy, man. <laughs> humans are insane. Because there are a number of allegations that have been put to me by journalists mm. uh, that are simply not true. There's a whole play. It's not just the emails. There's a sexual assault in the canal. There's... But, but if, if, oh, oh, if the police looked at this, mm -hmm. and if you sue, for example, mm -hmm. then this will go to a court of law. Mm -hmm. And then on discovery, people will look into all this. Mm -hmm. The phone company will be asked about evidence of all the text messages. Mm -hmm. The internet mm -hmm. providers will provide all the backup mm -hmm. for the emails. Mm -hmm. Facebook will be asked about the Facebook messages mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So all of this would come out in a court case. In disclosure, yes. And you're prepared to do that? Yes. Because I didn't write in the emails. Who do you think did? I have no idea. I think he probably made them up himself. I have no idea. Mm. 41,000 emails? Yeah. I mean, would you, I know. would you accept that someone who did that would be very obsessive about someone? Yes. I mean, that's a lot of emails. Mm. And why, why now? Why didn't you go to the police at the time? Or this sort of doesn't make sense. I mean, the fact yeah. that Netflix have said this is based on... Are you being misandrous? Are you victim blaming? He had to come to terms with that, okay? He just didn't know what to do. He was scared. He didn't think the, the police would help him. Sorry, I'm just... You said misogynist, so that kind of opened that can of worms there. Come on. All the victim stuff. Based on reality, this is a true story mm -hmm. that Martha did, the real life Martha, mm -hmm. the person they based this on, who Richard Gadd has written about, mm -hmm. is the person that sent these. Mm -hmm. And he has the evidence to prove it. What you're saying is that that proves you cannot be Martha. Yes, and I would like to see Netflix's evidence for that, which would come out in disclosure as well. And you're 100% sure it's not you? Yeah, absolutely. It goes on to say that you heckled Richard Gadd when he was appearing in his stand-up shows. Did you ever do that? No. Never? No, it's not. Did you true. ever attend his stand-up? I think I went to one. It was a long, long time ago. And you ago. never shouted out or anything? Why would I do that? No, I don't know. No, no, no. I mean, do you, ever, do you ever do shout that? out at comedy shows? I don't know. People no, do. no. I don't generally go to comedy shows. Um, so but so no. you never heckled him? No. Did you ever attack Richard Gadd's girlfriend because you were jealous? No, I don't think he had a girlfriend. I think he's uh, homosexual. But no, I have never been to his house or attacked any girlfriend or anything like that. There are lots of scenes where Martha is uh -huh. sitting outside his house all day for right. many days, mm -hmm. sitting in a bus stop, sitting out there, walking around, and would occasionally shout at him. Did you ever do that? No. I haven't seen the show, uh, but I, I'm getting... I have, so I I'm got, telling you. Yes, I got all the... Cool yes, you should see the show. If this is about you, you and, and you are here to defend the things that the show is saying about you, you should probably watch the show so that you can be educated, so that you can know exactly what these accusations are that are being levied against you. That's very, it doesn't mean anything. I'm not using it as a way to imply anything. It's just, I'm saying, dude, do your homework.
<laughs> put a little bit more grab work, especially if this is like so high profile. Remember, 10 million views in a single day. That's fucking crazy. You, you got to You got to know what's going on, dude. Instead, you'll just be kind of just clamoring around. You won't have the answers to these things that people are asking you on these questions. And it will. And people are going to do whatever they want with that. It's going to give these people who are already accusing you, uh, who are already against you, more ammunition to fire at you with. Oh, you don't know this? You don't know that? Oh, well, you, you didn't go out of your way to learn this thing? But this is a pretty big thing. And you don't know? That makes me think stuff about you. It's like, dude, come on. Just knowledge, man. Knowledge. That's your, that's your best weapon. Always, always be prepared for this shit. Always. All the court allegations, mm. um, the trial allegations. I'm going to come to that, but yeah. on that point, did you ever turn up at his house? No, I don't know, I don't know where he lived. No, absolutely not. So whoever's doing all this is somebody completely different. This is a fictional character, hyperbole, exaggeration. This is a fiction well, it's based on, of his imagination. They say it's based on a real person. Who's they? Netflix. Well, Netflix well, and ne Richard Gadd. Netflix Gad. are about as mad as Richard Gadd. If they're saying that, it's absolutely not correct. Did you ever contact... Mad? Maybe just money prone. Remember, the more you, you can apply more weight. I said earlier, there's way more weight to that if it's true, right? The, the true crime stories, the yada yada, that makes people think a bunch of stuff that comes out instead of it just being a fictional story. Like, that's dramatic. That, that's great for marketing. That's excellent for sales. Excellent. I don't know how this relates, but this is going to relate to a uh, kind of, I guess, to the publicity aspect. It was the Heart Attack uh, Cafe over in Vegas or wherever the fuck it is. There's the guy who owns it. He go, walks around dresses up as like a doctor or a surgeon. And the point is like to get fat people to eat there. And if you're over like 350 pounds, you eat there for free. And there's a bunch of crazy unhealthy foods there. And that's the, that's the, that's the point. There's this literally a burger called the triple bypass burger. That's like a bunch of patties on just like some bread. It's, it's pretty terrible. But it's like, there was an interview with him where he was talking about, hey, you know, a few people died here while eating this food. And I'm gonna be honest with you, he just said it like this, I'll be real honest with you, dude. Here's the thing. Our restaurant serves bad for you food. Other restaurants serve bad for you food. We're honest, they're not. Plain and simple, if everybody collectively got together and told the world all restaurant food is bad for you, then maybe we would save a few lives. Because I don't want to see people dead. Now, if they do die here, I'm not going to lie to you. That's great for business. I'll say it again. Death is great for business at the Heart Attack Grill. Death is great for business. It is excellent. It gets, you t it gets people talking about it. And that's the most important thing. Word of mouth, getting people's attention, evoking an emotion from people, that is the most important thing. Applies to all sorts of different things, dude. You, you gotta, that, that's what's motivating this stuff. It's just, I, I wonder, because if like all the stuff that she's saying is true, and they're just making up shit. I wonder what would happen as a result of that. Would would the payout that they would probably have to afford her, because she's probably gonna have to seek like financial damages and such. Would that be like a small little fraction of the amount of money they made from the overall attention caused by the, the popularity and success of the show? Maybe. Like in the end, a bunch of people win, even if they're not telling the truth, which is, yeah, dude, welcome to reality, man. It's, it's fucking insane. It's crazy. Humans are just, we're animals, dude. We're, we're evil animals. Did you ever contact Richard Gadd's parents and no, threaten them? No, that allegation was put to me by journalists, no. Never happened? No. There's one key point in the mm. drama yeah. that uh, has Martha's character pleading guilty to intimidating Richard Gadd in court and sentenced to nine months prison time. Mm -hmm. uh, let's watch. You're charged with the stalking of Mr. Donald Dunn between the dates of the 14th of August, 2015 and the 22nd of March, 2017. Are you guilty? or not guilty. Guilty? <laughs> you were charged with the harassment of Gerald Dunn and Eleanor Dunn between the dates of the 6th of June 2016 and the 22nd of March 2017. Are you guilty or not guilty? Guilty? <laughs> a little read here. Now again, there is a, obviously a resemblance between... Do you think so? Well, well, <laughs> That's only flattery. Well, I, I don't mean to fatty you or not fatty you, I just think there is... Hey, you're the one that takes care of your own health. Also, you by you saying that or making fun of the actress who's playing you. Don't... Come on. You said you were diabetic, right? How do you think that, that happened? Do you think it was genetics? Maybe it's the food you've been eating. Too much of it. All right, we're not getting that. Sorry, I'm fat shaming. It's it's pretty funny, but it's like she's the she threw she shot she shot some shots at the uh, actress. So I'm just defending the actress. Just let's just say that. I just think there is a resemblance, you know, having met you and you both speak you know, Scottish people. Yeah. Um, but the fundamental point of this is, mm. did you did you 
take part in that? So did you go to jail? Did you have no, a trial? No, of course not. Of course not. Have you ever been to prison? No. Have you no. ever been charged with Nobody a criminal offence? No. Never? No. Nothing? Nothing. So that scene is completely That's invented? That's completely false, and I don't think the actress sounds like me. I mean, people compare me to Lorraine Kelly, but I look nothing like Lorraine Kelly. We all happen to have dark hair, and we're Scottish, mm. you know. It's not the only comparison to be made. You're both also borderline obese. <laughs> oh, man. See, they just dance around that shit. Be real, guys. Come on. Like, stop just dancing around the reality of things. I think the actress is from Glasgow, I think, but I'm not sure. But I'm they, from and which part of Scotland are you from? I'm from the Central Belt. Um, so it's a slightly different accent. It, it, it's slightly different. A Scot would know the difference. A Scot would know the difference. A Glasgow accent is very different. But that's a yes. fundamental point mm. here, because if they basically have a key point in their... Right, Glasgow! Sorry. ...drama, mm -hmm. which they say is a true story, which involves you admitting to intimidating mm. Richard Gadd and getting a mm. nine-month prison mm. sentence. And that is completely untrue. That's completely untrue. Very, very defamatory to me. Um, very career damaging. I wanted to rebut that completely on this show. I'm not a stalker. I've not been to jail. I've not got injunctions, interdicts. This is just complete nonsense. But it's, I mean, you'll know yourself if you're charged with a criminal offence, it will go um, fine. Bigger fine, whatever. Very few people go to jail. Well, you'd have a police record. Nowadays. Yeah. Have you ever changed your name? Uh, uh, my, my, my surname was Double Barrels. What was it? Uh, Muir Harvey. So, huh? Muir Harvey, when I... Muir, when, M -U -I -R, uh, yes, Harvey. When I got... Um, when the parents got divorced, I changed it to Harvey. I just dropped... So, your, your maiden name when you were born was... Yeah, that's right. Was Muir, Muir, yes. Muir Harvey. Yeah. So, that's not quite an unusual name. Yeah. So, if you'd ever received a criminal conviction for anything, it would yeah. be on police files. Yes. And what you're saying is, you've never been even charged with an offence. No. Let alone the one that they... Yes, I mean, this is um, nine and a half months in jail. It's, it's pretty serious. Did Netflix ever contact you? No, no one's contacted me. Never? Never. Did Richard Gadd tell you what he was doing? No, I had worked it out when I saw the festival Baby Reindeer advert on BBC. The Edinburgh Festival, news. which the is Edinburgh the show festival. he did. I just happened to see that. I was looking up the news for something else. Because that's where he I owned... just happened to see that. Well, that's where he started telling the story yeah. and that's got, that got picked up. I was up. shocked. I was shocked. And I think Martha then was a bar stool. I seem to recall reading that. It wasn't an actress or a person. It was a bar stool. Let me just show a little clip. This is from Lorraine, actually, who you okay, just compared uh, yourself to. But let's take a look at this. Well, other this people is, do. Actually. This is Richard Gadd on Lorraine. I just thought it was the right time to sort of try and bring a nuanced conversation to something. I yeah. think the human the human condition is extremely uh, complicated, exactly. and, and I felt like a lot of the art and TV in this day and age had maybe simplified it too much. It's not a villain and, and victim of storyline. I think you're left with a lot more than that. It's kind of two lost people. What's your response to that? Um... I think they're milking it for all it's worth for the money. She doesn't even sound Scottish in that interview. Her accent seems to be varying. Well, well she's right. not. She's English. She's an actress. I was going to say, she it sounds more no, Lancashire she, she put, to me. She, yeah. No, she's English. Which she's, uh, she's an actress. She's, she's putting that, on the yeah, voice exactly. for you. They're milking it for all they're worth. Um, it was the right time for to abuse someone on all over social media and all over, you know, basically somebody who's not, not from Loveyland, not from Theatreland, just abused me all over the newspapers. They're happy with themselves. What do you feel about Richard Gadd? I think, he's a, I think he's psychotic, and I think that anyone going along, being in that play, and doing this to somebody, um, I, 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 find the, I find the behaviour outrageous. He says the whole thing. Yeah, that's fair. Especially if all the stuff he's saying is false. But boy oh boy oh. Money. Oh, that's always like, when you boil things down, it usually points to that. People trying to make money. And usually, like, a great way to make money is usually at the expense of others. All this stuff has created a shitstorm for this person, and now this person's like trying to come out with all this stuff, and that in turn reinforces the the whole cycle of of attention, of of the circulation of attention. If this stuff's supposed to happen as a result of these types of things, these people are benefited for it. Their careers are benefited. This guy's probably going to be able to make more shit, even if all this stuff goes through fruition. Goes to fruition. I bet you it's probably both going to not really affect his career in the long run but also it's going to continuously uh, apply more popularity to this entire situation altogether. This is, this is great publicity. It is bad. It is mean. But that clearly doesn't matter if you're just result-oriented. If you have a, a thing that you're trying to achieve, you do whatever it takes to achieve it. And this is a part, this is a part of that. Clearly, it worked. And it is, and it's continuously working. Remember, I'm going to say it. 10 million views in, in a, nearly a day. That's fucking crazy, man. As of watching this video right here, 9.2 million views in two days. This was uploaded two days ago on May 9th. That's fucking crazy. 
That's insane. It's worth, there's so many more videos on this, this topic as well on, on the Piers Morgan channel, other people talking about this stuff. It's working, man. It's a, it's, you don't even have to pay for fucking ads. This shit advertises itself. People are going to continuously have all this stuff to say about it just because they're intrigued by it. That's, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a monster, all of this stuff. It's, it's humanity, dude. You can't expect anything better. So given that this is the way things are, I will say it's time and time and just run with it. Take advantage of it. Exploit it for your benefit. That's exactly what everyone else is doing at your detriment. Retaliate, man. Get, that, get, your, get your money, man. Figure it out. Find a way to exploit the situation in a way that benefits you. That is the best way to go about it. You're just reacting. So make a little bit of money while you're reacting. It's, 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 yeah, it's grotesque, but welcome to the species, man. It's like every day is the apocalypse. We, we try to act as if like civilization is civil, but no. People are destroying each other all the time so that they can benefit themselves. That's just how it works. So the best thing you can do is just react. The whole thing started because he felt sorry for you, mm. and that's why he befriended you. Your staff said that to me in the, uh, the waiting room. Um, this is a lot of nonsense. I've got lots of friends. What did you talk to him about? It, it was just a holy arms banter. It was saying, um, like what? What kind of thing? Hey, what are you going to do with your life or, you know, career stuff, you know, sort of. And I thought he was a stand up show. But is, it possible that he, is it possible he was under the impression? While well, they're talking, it's like, yeah, hey, Gadder, Gad, Richard Gad, what are you going to do with your life? Oh, you'll see. <laughs> oh, man. That he felt sorry for you. No, I never got that impression at all. I, I got the impression that he was all out for himself, wanted to um, sort of control that bar, very, very um, um, inarticulate, very full of himself. He I should never have gone in that bar. <laughs> Do you, you wish know? you never had? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. How long did you know him for, Richard Gaff? Two or three months. Two or three months, at maximum. He only worked there on certain days. And did you always go on the days he worked there? No, I've been in there on different days uh, having food. Have other people from the pub contacted you? Nobody's contacted me. No one at all? About this at all, apart from the media. The mainstream media and stalkers on social media. He says, Richard Gaddy, he didn't see you as a villain, but as somebody who is unwell and needs help. Yeah, well, he maybe should look a bit closer to home, um, to himself, as someone who needs help. What, you think he's mentally unwell? Yes, I think he always was. Whether there was a, an alleged rape or, or whether that rape was real or conceived in his mind, I think that would make him more I mean, that's unwell. a rape that he says happened. Mm -hmm. It was a, a television uh, person. We don't know who it was. Mm. Uh, somebody was falsely linked with it, who mm -hmm. turns out to have nothing to do with it. But he, it's a very graphic scene in the drama where I he is that. brutally raped uh, after a lot of drugs are taken. Um, and he's kind of very... He appears to be... It's not funny. I mean, it's the way he said it. It's a graphic scene in the show where he was brutally after drugs were taken. Why am I laughing? Wow. I'm a cold piece of shit. Goddamn. He used to be in the drama very self reflective about himself. So he's no angel. He's not perfect. He's made lots of mistakes and he didn't treat you. Let me just. I laugh at other people's misfortune. Okay, unless like, I guess, because that usually applies to everyone. People usually have a little bit more of a compassionate uh, lens towards people when they can have some type of like personal connection to their, their trauma. If it's something that they don't give a shit about, like they can say they're compassionate, but probably just don't fucking care. A lot of people usually care about the stuff that really applies to them or that they can relate to when it comes to these types of things. Or unless they can see the pain caused as a result. People are vain creatures. I'm not trying to justify me laughing at him saying that because uh, you can laugh at anything. Who cares? Like none of it matters. You make fun of anything. It's just an interesting little, uh, little, little side thought. Might as well. In his eyes, as a villain, like he says, as somebody mm. felt that you were both slightly lost souls. Um, I didn't know the scene was in um, the play until this morning. Somebody's daughter had watched it and told me about it. So I was surprised once again. Well, not surprised actually. I'm, I'm really surprised by anything he does nowadays. Um, um, he seems to have written a couple of other shows about this alleged than this one and um, uh, we've had no apologies from Netflix or him or nothing I mean for someone who says he feels sorry for me I've had no apology and I have this Martha character seems to have smashed up a bar and um, sexually assaulted him in a canal been to prison and um, there are a number of other allegations and none of that is true dude how much can you squeeze out of this god damn Richard Gadd I mean if we were to speak to him it's like are you a creative is this like all you can do with your just real life 
like trying to translate the same story a billion different times. I I, I mean, it could just I could be coming from a, a lens of a different type of filmmaker because I like stories that like you know character driven, dialogue heavy. I don't really care if a story is real or not, and a lot of the stories that I make aren't real. They're just like totally heavily dramatized and just shit that I make up. I don't know. We could be coming from different places in terms of our priorities as, as creators. It's like, I don't... How much can you squeeze out of that shit? God damn. You, she said you were in multiple shows on this one particular... It's like, wow. It's not that interesting. <laughs> I mean, you can make anything interesting. You could... It really just depends on how you build, make things. But it's like, all right. That's just an a little quip. Whatever that is. No, that is true. That's not true. He says that... Um... People shouldn't try to find out the identity mm. of the real people in the drama. Mm. Um, do you give him credit for that? Mrs. No, no. He I actually tweeted this. People no, what, uh, I love, have I worked with and night? admire, including Sean Foley, who was the man wrongly uh -huh. accused of, of being uh -huh. the rapist, uh -huh. are fairly getting caught up in speculation. Please don't speculate on who any of the real life people could be. That's not the point of our show. Lots of love, Richard. Yes, I'm sorry. I can't see that. the date of that tweet. I can't. I said 25 minutes ago. But, well, yeah, it doesn't, you know, really. But still, yeah, that's, that's. I wouldn't even say that's damage control. He's just trying to present a certain face. If that's, come on. If you really did like see it that way, would you really like, would you really fucking build the show like this and have the characters look exactly like their, their real life counterparts and play the main character and have these things? It's just, yeah, he doesn't give a shit. Yeah, why would you? If the point is to make money and to succeed in your career, why would you give a shit? Can't actually see that any was, of it. That was literally like a few days after it was released. Right. So. I saw the headline. It was all over BBC Breaking News two weekends ago for four days mm. um, with Martha promoting herself, the character Martha Jessica promoting herself and him saying, don't speculate. Wow, that's a bit rich now, isn't it? The fans do speculate. It's, well, it was almost instantaneous. You were tracked down incredibly quickly. Uh, the Wednesday, the Daily Mail got in touch with me, so that was all over BBC Breaking News, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday. I mean, the reason that and, Internet uh, Sleuths were able to, to yeah, find out it was yeah. you was they found the tweets mm -hmm. that you sent mm -hmm. him uh, throughout 2014. Mm -hmm. um, 10th of May, for example, 2014. Yeah. Richard Gadd, did you get my re recorded delivery letter sent to the theatre? Mm -hmm. Sent to arrive bank holiday Monday. Mm -hmm. So you sent him a letter then? That, that was that, um, sorry you were, to hear you were right, something like that. Uh, 12th of June, same year, your tweets cheer me up, your timeline is good. 23rd of September, my curtains need hung badly. <laughs> we were trying to encourage him because uh, with this first show or something like that. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Yes, yeah, so on the 18th of December, please go and see Richard Gadd's show, it's well written and neurotic. Yeah, yeah. The filmed bum shots are the best, fantastic yeah. ass. It was a joke. It was right. a joke. But that's, we were trying to encourage him. Nothing negative though about it there. Uh, no, because I didn't think he was a complete psychopath who was going to attack me in this way. But the show did involve you. Th this, this show here, not mm. that show there. That made no reference to... This was to... a previous show. It made no reference to you, that show. Which the one, show? The one you're talking about. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. So, you know, it's funny this is coming up now. My, my view is it's all about the money, mm. yeah, the Martha Barstool, Edinburgh... There you go. Right on the fucking head and the nail or whatever the fuck. Absolutely. It's always about the money. And when you contextualize it that way, it kind of allows you to understand things in that way. If he's doing it for money, if all this stuff is happening so that attention can be driven, so that he can monetize that attention, it makes sense. It makes sense. So I guess you can't really be surprised. And she said she's not really surprised anymore. But it's like, I say, I tell myself that, right? When it comes to the extent of human stupidity, I'm not really surprised given all this shit. But I still get surprised. Humans find ways to really just be complete, disgusting, just creatures, just vile creatures. Expect it, but also expect to not expect it. There you go. Because there is going to be stupid shit that occurs in reality where it's like, oh, there's no way I could have anticipated this. And I, even though I, I did to some degree anticipate it, I'm still like taken aback because like, wow, fuck. <laughs> There are no bounds to human depravity. Just remember that. There is no extent. There is no, no cap to it. It can go on infinitely. Edinburgh Festival thing wasn't making any money. He'd failed as a comedian. He'd failed as an actor. And therefore, let's make some money, sell this to Netflix. Um, I think anyone in their right mind, you had a group of guys on there in their 20s. Mm. They don't believe it. What was your upbringing like? Um, Right, but still, being able to get into the door to be able to pitch to Netflix, that, that's like multiple layers. You have to have some degree of like people knowing who you are, having some degree of representation with the industry to just even get your opinion in front of Netflix. From what I've seen, it's like, it's that, that takes a few uh, steps. So, um, oh, looks like my battery's going down. Here, here's what we're going to do. I was going to say standard Scottish, this is it standard Scottish, Scottish countryside.
Happy, I'm unhappy. Um, I'm un yeah, yeah, uh, impoverished, but um, middle class upbring upbringing, if you like. Any you know. siblings? I have a sister. My mother worked incredibly hard. My parents got divorced when I was nine, but she worked like a Trojan. Are either parents still alive? Uh, my mother is, yeah. And is, how does she feel about this? I've not talked to her about it. I'm, I'm hoping she'll have just seen the Scottish headlines and that's it. She's not an internet freak. Or anything but like she has that. no idea what's happened to you. Um, she she will know uh, bits. And she was very very angry with Laura Walker for doing the original article when I went for parliament. You haven't talked to your mother about it. Um, no, and that may seem strange, but I don't want to worry her. I'll tell her I've been on the show mm. when it airs. Mm. Mm. I don't want to worry her. Let me ask you. The Sun reported an interview with mm. Laura Ray, mm. uh, who you've referenced, who accused mm. you of inappropriate behaviour whilst mm. you work with her. Now, yeah. the background to this is that you came into contact with the late Glasgow MP Jimmy Ray, who died aged seventy-eight in two thousand thirteen, and his sister wife Laura, who was sixty-two, and she was a former mm -hmm. Labour Party member. Uh, Mrs. Ray said that uh, she gave uh, Aberdeen University law graduate you. Mm. You did graduate from Aberdeen yes, yes. with a law degree. Yeah. Uh, a trainee role at the legal firm MacPhail Lawrence Partnership in 1997. Is that true? It was called L and L Lawrence. I think she forgets the name of her own firm. It's called L and L Lawrence. But, but that's all true. She gave you a trainee job. Uh, she lured me away from another firm. She headhunted me from another firm because she needed someone to do employment law, and I'm pretty good at employment law. So she said that she had to sack you days later because mm. you were completely incapable of behaving yourself. I walked. Her staff were really, really rude to me. Um, most people, half the Labour Party, had been up there at one point or another and walked. Mm. She then said that mm. following you leaving, uh, obviously mm. very quickly, mm. that you then harassed her. Mm. Uh, you were then, then known as Fiona Muir, obviously, mm. as you said, Muir Harvey. Mm. Um, Mrs Ray said she was so frightened, she issued mm. workers at a firm with personal alarms. Mm. Um, you were then served an interim interdict mm. to stop you from contacting the lawyer or her politician husband. Daily um, Record reported that. She messed up, I know, and I still have to speak to David about that, um, the author of that Daily Record article. Mm. She didn't. She messed up because I went into the Court of Session, the High Court in Edinburgh, mm. to get countrywide interdicts, uh, an interdict and an injunction in Scotland and England because I was going to move to London anyway. Um, she mucked up. Um, so you went into court to get them yourself? Yes, I think there was who? no need against Laura Walker and Jenny Ray. But she said one was served on you. Yeah, that's that's nonsense. An interim so check this out. And again, that, there will be um, a public record of Yeah, that. absolutely. And You're what, saying that it was never served? Uh, what we think, she served the initial documents. And then oh, she did? She uh, no. Um, she, she served the initial documents mm. and then there was no hearing. She, uh, it wasn't minuted for a hearing. Mm. I said I would defend, but she mucked that up too. She didn't fill up a second initial document. She then didn't minute for a decree in absence. So there is no interim interdict in Scotland. Why, why would two people who have no... What the hell? These are all very specific things that are being, that are being accused. And she's also saying some specific stuff in retaliation. And you have no idea who you can fucking believe here. Wow. Who, who's wrong? Who, who's the... Oh, man. God damn, people. Fucking animals, dude. Uh, what we think, she served the initial documents and then oh, she, she uh, No. Nope. Um, she, she served the initial documents mm. and then there was no hearing. She, uh, it wasn't minuted for a hearing. Mm. I said I would defend, but she mucked that up too. She didn't fill up a second initial document. She then didn't minute for a decree in absence. So there is no interim interdict in Scotland. Why, why would two people who have no contact with each other at all, mm. um, Laura Ray mm. and Richard Gadd, why would they both portray you as a very unpleasant? Come on, people, people suck. People don't need a reason to dislike another person. I, I mean, again, I don't have, I don't know who's right or wrong in this scenario, but I'm just saying, take, making observations about human nature. If you evoke a feeling from people, if people just don't like you, they don't, there could be a reason to it, but that reason may not be legitimate or well thought out or like intelligent. People could just, di just not like you. Dude, like in school, let me go out. Go back in some time here. I don't know, I, I just think I had this thing where I like to befriend kids who were kind of just outcasted, kids who were bullied. There were multiple instances where I would just get, like, make friends with kids. I'm not sure why. I never really made it like a voluntary thing. I was like, I'm going to befriend that kid who's getting bullied. I just, I don't know. Maybe seeing them being treated the way that they were, it kind of gave me interest in them because like, if clearly people dislike you because, and, and I've seen how fucking stupid most people are, then it's like, maybe there's something, maybe we could have an interesting uh, interaction. And the few times that I've gone on my way to have these things, I got to know these people. I'm just like, why are you guys, why are you getting treated like garbage? These were by different, these were different people who were being treated by, poorly by different people. This happened a few times, three times I can point to throughout my high school, middle school, actually mainly high school. This happened and, and uh, I don't know, it was just, um, I always take it with a grain of salt with the stuff that people say about others. Cause it's like, I don't trust anyone. Everyone's out for, for their own emotional reasons. People have their own agendas. It's good to just doubt everything. 
Like, I don't, not necessarily taking her side either, but it's like, I can understand why why there would be multiple people here and there who would just, like, have their own problems with you. Because people suck, man. People are just mindless, emotional creatures that just act in shitty ways to reaffirm their emotions within their environment so that they can f continue to feel those things. It's it's disgusting. That's why I, this plays into the, the truth thing about said about the truth. What matters isn't the truth. What matters is what people believe to be the truth because that's enforceable. And since the truth usually doesn't evoke positive emotions that get enough people to want to rally behind it, they're tending going to follow the thing that makes them feel a certain way that reaffirms their ideas to that they've built towards reality, that makes them feel, you know, not the ways that actually acknowledging truth and reality would make them feel, which is normally garbage. If you acknowledge how bad things are, that's not going to make you feel good. Now, there is a solace to be found in acknowledging reality, right? It's like, okay, I know what is, I'm grounded in, in truth, but it's like, what good does that do you? If you have a goal, if you have incentives, if you're an emotional creature, which everyone is, why would you want to be truthful about stuff? Why would you want to acknowledge how indifferent and callous the world is when you could just live in fantasy and act in ways that reaffirms that, fan that fantasy in your environment? It's, it's, it's terrible, dude. So that wouldn't be strong enough an argument to point against this person. All these, these two people that you ran into just are saying somewhat semi-similar stuff about you. It's like, I, I, that's not enough for me. <laughs> if it's now with that logic, I can't even say if it's like 20 plus people and they're all saying the exact same thing. All right, sure. Let's let's look into that. But like a few people here or there, there's a lot of fucking loonies out there, man. A lot of really shitty people who only care about themselves. And even the people who could be seen as good people by the people around them. It's like that's just their opinion of them. That's just what they're judging based on how that person has interacted with them. And not even always based on how they've witnessed or observed how that person interacts with other people. Because again, everyone's motivated by whatever it is that they find important in life. So take everything with a grain of salt. Everything. I don't know why Richard Gatt has, but uh, Laura Walker upset me because I was going for parliamentary selection. The two different, you get my point, two different people. Yeah, but Richard Gatt has Googled that. Richard Gatt, Gatt has used that as Well, that's a, in the drama. Show. Is, is when they find out mm. that you have. Did she just say Gatt? She's on the Gatt? I'm sorry. You had previously uh -huh. harassed this family. I haven't harassed that family. I didn't harass that family. And also I worked for it in 1987-88. The parliamentary selection wasn't until 2000. He Googled up the article because I knew he'd done that. Mm. I never went back to the Holy Arms. He was spreading it around Camden that, that, um, that I was a stalker. Have so you, you, you're, You've never married? Uh, no. Have, have you had relationships yeah. with, with mm. men? Ooh. I mean, if you don't mind me being pure I'm heterosexual. Yeah, but how many, how many relationships have you had? I told the staff that relationships were out of bounds. A lot more than Richard Gadd has, I would say. Mm. He had a lot. Quite a few. Right. Well, I don't know. Come on. It's not a flex. You're a woman. <laughs> that shit comes easy to you. Men hand you those things. <laughs> and you just pick and choose. Even someone like, Ugh, I'm making jokes about this, how this person looks. It's not entirely fair, but come on. If you're going to go there, I'll go there. Even someone who looks like you, you still have options. Which is, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. That's pretty. Uh, it's pretty weird. Well, I don't know if he had a law. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. How and obviously, now you're going. Here's my yeah. point. Now you're going yeah. public. Then the men that you've dated over the years will not see this. Yeah. They'll be aware of it. They'll hear you. I don't think they. If your next question is going to be, am I stalking them? I think the answer is going to be no. Well, I just wonder how. The, yeah. How do you think they would view you? I think they are going to think what I think about Richard Gad, that He's completely off his head. And I'm not worried about the current one because he's a lawyer and he. Do you currently have a boyfriend? Me, yeah. He's a lawyer? Yeah. In London? Doesn't matter where he is. Mm. Uh, long, you know, I'd long, rather... No, no, I understand, but how long have you been... Five years, five years. You've been in a five-year so, relationship? Yeah, so I don't... So, so what does he think I don't want this? to drag him in. He thinks this is horrendous. All of my lawyer friends do, all of my professional friends do, other people do, and um, people are being really sympathetic. Uh, people I don't know are saying things like, are you getting hounded in the street? You know, people are being really, really nice. I mean, after... Anyone who does know about this. You know, here's mm. the thing. I don't know the truth. Mm. You do. Mm -hmm. And you've been emphatic in yeah. the number of denials you're yeah. making here. That's right. But many of those things that I've put to you can be proven. You're talking about emails and an email trail thing. All that. You know, all of that. You're obsessed with... Uh, sorry, I don't mean to be horrible. I'm not obsessed with anything. You're, you're, you've gone on at length for a good ten minutes about the emails. Well, only because yeah. the emails... Because the so, vast number. Well, mm. there's a huge number and voice messages. The voice messages he's kept, apparently. Mm. And it and there is... He's maybe taping me in the holy arms. I don't know if he's got any voice messages. But if he has 350 yeah. voice messages and it's you... It doesn't mean the drama is true. Um, but is it possible he's got 350 voice messages? I doubt that very much. I just don't think so. You doubt it? 
Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, unless wouldn't he's you be, taping me. I mean, if you've never really contacted him, if he's he got could three, have been taping me in the Holy Answer. But if he's yeah, that's a weird choice of words there. Why would you doubt that? You were the one that had control of that. You'd say, no, that's not true. Like, you've denied for everything else. Granted, this are, these are just little pickings right here and there. So it could just be the way that they're wording this at this time and place. So it could mean nothing. It, it may or may not. I don't know. Like, this is still crazy. <laughs> it's very interesting. But if he's got 350... I've got no, if these are on his phone. Yeah, it doesn't matter what whether they're on a phone, tablet, whatever they're on. I've not coincided. But I'm curious, why would there even be a possibility of him having that number of voice messages from you? Because he's crazy. He wants to make this up. I mean, I've not phoned the guy. I don't have his number. Yeah, but you're, you're not sure that he hasn't got those. I think he. The only explanation for having a voicemail from me would be um, taping me in the Holy Arms. That's the only place. Or that you've left messages on his phone. That's the other explanation, which just didn't happen. But you can't be sure. I can't be sure because I didn't have his number. Right, you just said you weren't sure if these were your voice messages. Yeah, what I mean is somebody could be taping me, you know, somebody could have taped me in the holy arms. Right, on a dictaphone or something but if like he, that. My, here's my point to you, is yeah. that these are easily provable things. Yeah. He's either got them or he hasn't. Yeah, uh, Yeah. I mean, we, we, and the email, we'll be asking for disclosure of that. But... And the emails, obviously, mm -hmm. there'll be an IP address and that, if that, yeah. if that mean, leads to you. Yeah, I mean, my point is, though, even if that were true, mm. I didn't lunge at him across the bar, I didn't essentially assault him in a canal, I didn't go to jail. I understand, so, but uh, here's, here's my point. That's some weird wording right there. Even if that were true, I doubt that. But I didn't do all this other stuff, but... It, hmm. And even if that were true, I mean, that's not really a big deal. <laughs> it's just messages. Just just emails and voice messages. But the email number is pretty crazy. The frequency is pretty crazy. 350, I think that's what they said. That's, that's a lot. And that could definitely be uh, considered as harassment. But the extent they're going, I guess... Because I guess what people want to point out is what is to, to figure out what this number is so that they can allude to other stuff that's reflected in the show. I don't know, and I can't say, but that's, yeah. My point to you, yeah. that's my point to you, Fiona. And I'm not trying to catch you out. I'm not trying to trap you. I'm genuinely fascinated by this story. I watched the drama. I saw them declare it at the start as a true story. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the interviews since with all various people. Mm -hmm. And it's clearly a very complex situation, this. But unless I'm mishearing you, I think what you're saying is that there is a possibility that you send a lot of emails no, and there's a lot of no, voice messages, I didn't but that. that it doesn't mean that you did the more serious things. Yeah, I am not saying at all that I sent loads of emails. Um, mm. You maybe misheard, play back the interview. What I'm saying is a handful at most. If, mm. if I did, congratulations about the show. But if he does have 350 voice messages... I know that he doesn't. ..and it's your voice. He doesn't. And everyone can now hear your voice. Unless he was taping me. There you go. That's more... That's more concrete. He doesn't, because I never did that. That was weird beforehand. You know, it's it's just what people say in, in the moment. You can't really take that with a grain of salt. Or, or he just kept them on his phone. I didn't phone him. Mm. Mm. You sound unconvinced. But no, I no, I'm not. I'm, honestly, I mean, what... no. So it's your point that you are you challenging him to reveal this evidence? No, I I just would I would challenge him to leave me alone. Because you're calling him a liar and you're calling Netflix. I didn't use lies. those words. I said the the, the story and um, the play, the, the mm. Netflix show is not true. No, but if they say that you sent 41,000 emails... Well, they... Yeah, then what's the opposite of not true or of truth? It's a lie. If you're saying stuff and you're saying that is true, then that's lying. They, they are completely messages. wrong. Or 744 They're tweets. They're completely wrong. So they are lying? They are lying. Yes, OK, yeah, in effect, he is lying and they are lying. And in order for a dramatisation to be true, mm. It's got to be, you know, the only defences are veritas, I'm telling the truth, um, or um, the whole drama needs to be true. They have built it as a true story, so has he, and it's not. Mm. It's blatantly not. Even if the email thing was true, the rest is not. So Why what... would you qualify that, Fiona? Sorry, why would I what? Why would you suddenly qualify even if it's true about the emails? I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Right, but when you say even if the emails were true... But why? Why are you playing devil's advocate? The devil's against you <laughs> in this scenario, the one being accused. Interesting wording. The, again, the wording itself doesn't mean it. I, we need to see evidence and we'll, we'll see stuff as it goes because I'm pretty sure it's going to escalate. It's probably going to go to court because this is pretty big. Remember, 10 million views. <laughs> this is not just going to, it will blow over but sort of gradually fizzle out. So this is your moment. You're going to capture it or let it slip. Yo. But true. I didn't say it in 41 It doesn't, it doesn't mean the more serious stuff is. Let me rephrase that. That's really what you're saying, right? I mean, I, I don't want to force you into saying anything yeah, that's I mean, not actually true, but it seems to me that it may be possible that you have 
communicated all this stuff with him, but that doesn't mean you did the more serious thing. Yeah, yeah, it that, doesn't that's mean you, true. It doesn't mean you attacked his girlfriend. It doesn't mean you smashed yeah. up a bar. Yeah. It doesn't mean you did any of those things or threatened anybody. It just, yes, you had a relationship with this guy and you did contact him a lot. I knew this guy. I didn't contact him a lot. I've never said that in this interview at all. No, no, but, mm -hmm. I, but interestingly for me as an interviewer, and I'm just trying to get to the truth. You understand? No, no, I, I, I honestly I'm not trying to see that. It's your show. I'm yeah, not trying no, to trip you that. up. I'm, I'm just trying to get to the I truth. I see that. He, he has put his version out there, and the world is watching. Absolutely. Millions what? and millions of people around the world have I had know. Richard Gadd's version. I know. And I'm simply saying to you that yeah. you, have a, you have a chance here, Fiona, I think, and take this any way you want, but you have a chance here to concede that some of these things might be possible, but that doesn't mean oh. the more serious things. Yeah, happen. I mean, what I'm saying is. Because the more serious yeah. stuff. We know is serious, right? If you were, a, yeah, if you were in the jail or something, if you were a violent serious, stalker, or yeah. if you'd had a previous situation where you got this interim internet, which we know was served on you. No, it, it was not. Sorry to interrupt there. No, she has repeatedly maintained this over twenty-five years. Mm. I checked with the sheriff clerk. Another lawyer checked with the sheriff clerk. We think that the, the, the previous mm. scenario happened. She does not have an interim internet. Mm. I think she's quite wrong. Okay. If the sheriff clerk can produce that and say mm. she didn't muck up and minuted for decree, why was I not served an incident if, if Richard injunction? Gad, if Richard yeah? Gadd is watching this, what's... Then that is going to be what everything boils down to is the evidence, because all those things is provable. The emails, the, the phone calls, the everything else. So that should be the thing that determines what people think about this entire scenario. Now, granted, again, the truth doesn't matter. People are going to have their own ideas of it. So even after it comes out, it won't matter. Um, but it will matter in context to the legality aspect of things. So um, I guess don't really have your opinion. If you're going to take anything away from this, just don't have any opinion on the scenario until like you see for sure these things are produced. The evidence is produced in, in, a, in a fashion that everyone can uh, consume it. Uh, you know, it's he said, she said. That's what it all boils down to. But... A lot of the big parts of the story boils down to stuff that is provable. So, I'm not going to say whether or not this person is or isn't. From what I gather, just off of like what has been said, without any evidence. You know, this is just me putting stuff together based on the information that I I have from this. She, he's probably it's embellishment from it's, it's what it seems. Uh, the show, uh, not what she's saying. It's it seems that a lot of this stuff is not true a lot of the serious stuff is, is untrue and they used this is a true story in order for the in marketing and that's why so they can make lots of money from what i gather but that's just what i think based off of the information that i have presented right here nothing else i haven't seen the show i haven't done anything else done any legwork but and, and, and regardless of the legwork that i do right now we should wait don't don't sit on a concrete companion, uh, opinion of this until the evidence itself is presented, until it goes to court, until we know for sure that people uh, people have done the due diligence on, on both sides. So, um, yeah, but just based on all that stuff, my uninformed opinion without any evidence, I think it seems to be falsified, uh, the show, and the stuff has been exaggerated or just completely made up in order to just tell a story, which is fine, just don't say it's true. Because look what happened. This lady is now on this show and has to speak her case as a result of that crap. So, um, hey, I mean, it started multiple people's careers, right? Why don't you find a way to monitor it? Write a book. Write a book telling your story. Uh, start a podcast or something. I don't know. Do something that you think you'd like to be able to make money off the scenario. Because there's a pretty big monetary opportunity here that's been afforded to you. Well, thrust upon you. I don't want to say afforded because that implies, like, positive stuff because this sucks all this crap but dude just run with it man exploit it you're already in this position right this. what's your message to him leave me alone please um get a life get a proper job i am horrified at what you've done leave you alone get a life get a proper what do you fucking think all this shit is firstly it seems like he has already left you alone it's other people that are harassing you he just told a story that was probably maybe fake that caused issues for you. He's not the one that's specifically doing that. And get a job, get a life. What do you think all this stuff is? As a result of what he did, he now has an, a career where he has opportunities to do the shit that he's always wanted to do. He's worked towards this for years. Get a job? I hate that. Don't say that to anyone. What, what crappy advice is that? When people are telling you to get a job, they're telling you to make money. They don't give a fuck about what you do. 
They're just using it as a roast because it sounds all, oh, this is what you're supposed to do. This is what we, this is how humans conduct themselves. Dude, make money. This guy did exactly what, this is his job. And he's made more, so much more money and has pushed his career so much farther than he would have had done through any other avenue of just getting an average job, dude. Hate that. I'm gonna rescind that for her because that was dumb. But I don't think that she's entirely wrong. Again, use the evidence to judge and I'm using, I'm establishing it. I'm just off of the information that I have presented. I can't say for sure the evidence hasn't come out, so, but I'm just judging based on the skewed information that I have access to, okay? Don't get me wrong. If you get me wrong, then you're stupid and that's your fault, so maybe learn to listen. And you will categorically be taking legal action? Absolutely, against both him and Netflix. You, you said your boyfriend's a lawyer, so this yeah. can be done He's not doing it, no, I'm not doing it. Somebody else is going to Have you instructed it. lawyers? Uh, we've instructed them in part, but we want to explore all the options out there. There are a number of, number of people to sue. We can't all be in tech calls all at once. So. Who else are you planning to sue? Uh, the Daily Mail. Anyone that, that's saying this is true and harassing me and um, that kind of thing. Mm. We, we, we have not had time to do everything. If, if, if... Everyone that's harassing you, really the strangers on the internet, no, go for the big boys. Go for Netflix. Go for Richard Gadd. <laughs> How are you gonna get somebody who's sending you hate mail on the internet? Get, give me a break, dude. If, if, if mm -hmm. the investigation, if you sue and there's discovery, mm. And it turns out that 41,000 emails mm. did come from a device belonging to you. Mm. How would you feel about that? I wouldn't be suing if I thought there were 41,000 emails out there. Mm. We understand. That's not an answer. <laughs> I mean, that's a lawyer's answer, but that's not an answer. You should have been like, well, I don't have to worry about that because it's never happened. So I know that nothing, and I can show you, I know for a fact because I know it didn't happen, so. I understand how easy it is to find them. I understand completely. And that if they did exist, and you're categoric that they didn't, mm -hmm. it would it would obviously it wouldn't blow the whole case. It wouldn't blow the case against Netflix because, and it wouldn't blow the case against him. No, no, you might well make, have making out it's a true story. No, 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 no. See what I mean? I'm back no, no. to my original position. I I understand, and I understand that it's obviously put your life into a very difficult position. It's very and, and their central claim that they made all this effort not mm -hmm. to lead to you being identified, I don't think stands water. I don't think it stands water. To me, it's pretty. Um, I could have, listen. I've been a journalist forty um, years. I could have discovered it was you in about ten minutes. Yeah. yeah. One side of one. Yes, I agree. I discovered it was me when I saw the, the BBC breaking mm. news baby reindeer show at the Edinburgh Festival mm. when I was Googling up just the news that day or the weather or something and this came up and it was he was holding up a placard mm. or a newspaper article, MP's wife stalker, all you need to do is Google that. Then I saw the name of the show and I thought, bloody hell, what's he up to? And um, I tried to get a friend to go see the show mm. because she was based in Edinburgh but she was on holiday and nobody I know had seen that show um, either. Um, so I was really shocked, I was very upset for two, three days, and then the general plan of action among my close friends was, look, just, you know, let him get on with things. He's not going to be that damaging. You don't really know him. This will go away. <laughs> when Famous did you last, last have any contact with him? Famous last words. Years ago. Do you, years, do you remember years when? Years ago, no. Um, I, I left the Holy Arms, didn't go back, and he was calling me a stalker and things. And there were various things happening in the Holy Arms. You know, other women were warning me about them and everything, yeah. About him? About him and others with bad conduct. In relation Why'd you just let it, like, expecting to blow over? Why didn't you, like, bring it up, bring up something even sooner? Wouldn't that have helped your case? Like, hey, you know, I've brought this to some, uh, the, the court's attention before because it was defamatory, in their words. Yet you were just like, nah, let me just ignore it. We'll see what happens. And now you're here. <laughs> that would make your case look a little bit stronger. It's just interesting. In relation to the 106 letters that he and Netflix say <laughs> you sent, well, here's my point. You've, yeah. you, you've admitted sending him one. Mm. And that presumably was a handwritten letter. Could could it? Be, um, are you thinking I was maybe mistaken that I maybe did? No, no, no. I'm just saying if if we accept that the one that you admit to mm. sending is in your own handwriting, mm -hmm. he has another hundred and five letters in your yes, it's handwriting. It's yeah, but are, are you prepared for him to show that one? He's and maybe the forged things. I mean, people people forge a lot of things. You think he could, is, he could successfully write a hundred and five letters to himself? Well, I certainly didn't. No, but you, you admit to sending one. My point is, if it turns out the other 105 are exactly the same handwriting, wouldn't that point yeah, to I mean, make... Yeah, obviously bring in handwriting experts. I didn't do it. Nobody you only, you only have sent sorry. one letter. Yeah, I'm sorry. I haven't sent that guy 106 letters. Do you still email people? It, what, what do you mean? Do you send emails? Yeah, yeah. Do you have the same email address you've always had? Um, I, I had six at one point. Why? Um, because I like to keep people on different phones and different emails. It's, six it's different easier. emails. Uh, maybe four. I think it's four to six. Yeah, it's, it's it four, easier. Four or it's six. easier. So you have some for your utilities, some mm. for close friends, whatever. Yeah. But six is a lot. Is it? I don't know anybody with six email addresses. 
You don't know many people then. I know, I know people with four or six emails right. addresses. Well, was it four or six? I can't remember. Probably six. Probably how, six. how many do you use today? I had four phones. Um, I've got one today, but I only email select friends. And you had, you had four phones? Yeah, um, two broke. They were very, very old. One was brand new and broke, and it's still to be returned to the show. Also, that's not too crazy. I have a lot of emails, all for different purposes, mainly business related. I have a few that, like, I have one email that just kind of just gets spammed for the most part with a bunch of like ads and shit. Because that's the one that I see, I sign up for websites for, and I use basic communication here and there. I have, you know, Gmails and such. I have an old AOL for various purposes at various times. I don't. It's not as as procedural as hers, right? I'm not as coordinated. It sort of just was all around the place. But I could believe, I could see that having that many emails. Interesting uh, point to sort of just have the back and forth on, but... To the shop. Mm. I like keeping people on separate phones as well. And maybe that makes me a maniac or a stalker or something, but if you've got somebody on about your electricity bill or somebody on about some work or something, it's, it's nice to keep it separate, you know. So um, I didn't do that in Scotland. You didn't have to, but the volume of calls do, do you think, here is... Um, Fiona, do you think mm. if somebody did send someone... Yeah. 41,000 emails... I think that's versus, excessive, obviously, yeah. Would that, to you, would that mean someone's stalking someone? Well, yes and no. I mean, it could be, you know, it could be your wife. It could be, you, you know, you're maybe sending emails every day about the kids or something like that. I don't know. 41,000 is a lot. That's how many a day? My maths isn't working this time of night. Um, it's, but a it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily mean they're stalking somebody. They could be great friends. You know, they could have been friends for 50 years or something. Was he ever your friend, Richard Gay? Uh, no. No. Staff asked me that as well. No, I don't think so. But you had a lot of banter with him. Yeah, but banter's one thing. Scottish banter down here is quite kind of welcome. You know, it's not really, it's not really fun city, is it? It's not jokey city. Were you ever in love with him? Yes. Is that a serious question? Yeah. No. No. It's not a question of... By his own admission, hmm. he has said that he led you on at times. And he clearly I gave was... him the brush off. He asked me to sleep with him with a big green spot in his face one day. I said, no, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. He asked you to do what? He asked me to sleep with him. He said, would I like my curtains fixed? And I laughed. And he said, that's a euphemism. Do you want me to come home with you? And I said, I've got a boyfriend. So I gave him the brush off big, well, big time, I think. You know, it's subtly, subtly so, but the bottom line is, I think this him? is behind him. No, I don't fancy him. I don't fancy little boys without jobs. <laughs> that sounds awful. That sounds... Yeah, it does. I mean, he seems to uh, fancy big girls with uh, lawyer jobs. <laughs> big is an understatement. <laughs> It's fine. I, 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 I like like bigger girls, but it's like, not her. Yuck. <laughs> and again, the job shit. What do you think all this is, is as a result? His job? The thing that he makes lots of money off of? The thing that he has a career because of this. People don't know what they're saying if they're telling you to get a job. That doesn't mean shit, like honestly. It's just a way to, a haphazard way to roast people. Usually it's a rather thoughtless way to roast people too, so yeah. Disregard it when people say that. It's not really, really callous, but, you know. People will watch this. You've watched the Netflix series. Mm. And like me, they, they, they will be trying to work out mm. where the truth lies. It seems to me that either you're innocent mm. in the way that you've mm. claimed to be, and you've been horribly defamed mm -hmm. here. I think at the very least, the Netflix duty mm. of care and Richard Gaz's duty of care has been a spectacular failure. I agree. Right, regardless of anything else. Regardless mm. of your culpability of anything, the duty of care has failed because people identified you incredibly quickly. So they've made this what they say is a true story mm. and everyone's worked out it's you mm. and the picture they paint is of a, mm. a, a completely crazed stalker mm -hmm. ruining a man's life. Mm. Albeit he accepts that some of his behaviour may have led mm. the person on. Can I ask a question? Do you happen to know how much he's made out of this Netflix thing? I would imagine... Several million pounds. Yes, I, I would say three to four million. A lawyer I know well thought he was a wee nobody and he suggested 750 to 100,000. I said, no, I think you're looking more about three or four million. And I think the more he publicises, um, it goes up, um, you know, uh, according to how, how much it's streamed. I don't know. I don't know what the contract they signed. I think he's done bloody well out of defending. Do you, do you resent that? Um, I don't resent. Yeah, so what are you talking about? Get a job. The point is to make money. If he's made that much, are you kidding me? God, people, think about this shit before you say it, honestly. It's any Scott getting on. This is not what this is about. Um, but he's effectively uh, making money out of what he he's says. He's making money out of what my misery. What he says is you yeah. stalking him. Yeah, he's making money out of untrue facts. He's been the ultimate misogynist. The actress was also not appealing for calm. He was appealing for calm. I think he did that to sort of stir things up more. Um, I think they knew exactly what they were doing. And I think your staff were talking about uh, Martha, the sequel or something mm. like this. 
it's just completely That's what people crazy. are hinting at. It's completely crazy. Well, your staff put that to me mm. and put to me, should I write a book about this? Well, I've got other things to do, but same, it's a possibility. You, you've got a law continues. degree. Yeah. Law degree. So you're obviously very bright. How did you do at school? I've got a photographic memory. I was top of the school, apart from the science. Um, which I think which the, school was the, that? Above uh, High. I went to the science um, person, got the most marks because you can get 99% of the How many O and A levels did you end up with? I got six hires. Uh, two X S S Y S's, and they were all sort of most were A band ones, which was when when the A band one was top of the thing. I was, and with your law degree, what did, what grade did you get? Not bad. I mean, oh, all oh, right. What was you know, it? Uh, I just did an ordinary degree and then a diploma in legal practice. Well, what grade? What grades did you get? Um, all right grades, all right grades. But you know, what, I what, went out what, what part, partying. It would, I didn't do an honest degree, so you know, just. Well, standard grades, what, what really. degree did you, you did a law degree or? I did a law degree with 13 subjects, 13 law subjects. So it wasn't a CPE or anything, um, which I also have from down here, but uh, mm. it was 13 law subjects. This was, is from Aberdeen University? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what degree did you end up with? A law degree, and then I did a politics degree after that. And what grade politics, did you get Politics, women's studies. Um, I did substantially better in that because I did more work. You know, I, I think in our day, when you went to university, you did There's a reason, you say you've got a photographic memory, but yeah. what, what grades did you get? It, all right, grades. I mean, not top of the year or anything. No, no. But you, all right you get, you get, you, when you do a degree, you get a. Yeah, oh, you're asking me what marks I got for 13 subjects. I can't remember. Well, no, you but, end up with it. Did you get a first class degree? Oh, no. It? Well, I said I didn't do an honest degree. I wanted to go out and practice, so it was an ordinary degree I did. Right, but you can't remember how you did. I, I did all right. I didn't do mm. top of the year. Mm. But you're, the other graduates at the same time, they'd all remember you. Some of them remember me. One of them did incredibly well. He's a high court judge. Mm. Uh, some people didn't do well. I think the general idea in the 80s was we didn't really do much work. That sounds absolutely awful. But, you know, that was kind of the 80s. If it came to it, would you, mm. you take a lie detector test? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, possibly, yeah. I would need to consult other lawyers about that. If we that. set one up, you would do it. A lie detector test for what? You know, I well, no, the, the police, as you know, the police use them. Um, they're just an indication. They use them for mass. No, lie detector tests are bullshit. Are you kidding me? It's it's some stats. There you go. It's it's just hearsay. It's how do you know that somebody's lying just by hooking up a goddamn machine to them? It's it's mainly just vanity crap. I would not take that because it's like people would do what it, like it, the lie detector will answer whichever way it does whether or not something is or isn't true, and you're just gonna have to deal with that. It's going to cause more issues for you if you're trying to convince people of something. That That's dumb. I thought you were a journalist, dude. Police don't... No, and, and, and that's another thing. They Police don't allow, at least in court, that the lie detector is not something valid they use as evidence. Because it's just... it's That's like witch... Salem witch trial bullshit right there. <laughs> it's not... That's not valid. The mass murder and things like that. Same. <laughs> Well, no, they actually, they yeah. use them in many cases just to determine whether they think someone's in the They truth. don't use them that much. I know you've done the programmes of women behind bars and mm. things. I, I, I can face I think I've just seen one. But it's not used that much. Well, look, I'll be honest with you. Since, another thing. Since yeah. you mentioned it, I've done, yeah. I've done a lot of crime interviews with people who've committed mm. way worse offences than what you've been accused yeah, of. Yeah, I haven't seen um, and we have. You know, way, way more. Mass murderers, serial killers and so on. And, it, you know, they're all, I've got to say, almost all of them are very good liars. Could it be, people will be asking this, watching you thinking... Either she's genuinely innocent here mm. or she's a terrible liar who is capable of all of these things. I don't lie and um, I, I tell white lies if I absolutely have to, like mm. when my 94-year-old ex-neighbour was dying. We all knew she was dying and I'd phoned her in the hospital the night before and I lied and said, you know, have a good sleep, everything's going to be fine and that. You know, you know so I'll tell a white lie like that mm. when it, somebody clearly needed some rest. And How many, how many times did you meet Richard Gerd? Don't know. What would you guess? Five, six. Maybe five, six times. That's it? Yeah. In your life? Yeah. Yeah. How do you think it's come to this? If that's all true... I think he wanted to make money. I think he picked on somebody. There was a backstory there with that stalker article out there, right? So stalking's in vogue, going to prison's in, vo in vogue. Um, would a writer... Or it's just a story that will draw attention. And when you say that it's true, that gives it a little bit more weight. Of course it's about money. It's always about money. <laughs> All right, very last bit here. Like to say, or English lecturers or something, write about what you know. And to people who are watching, look down the barrel of yeah, that camera. I'm to people who are watching this and who still doubt you, what do you say to them? I think you should watch this. I think you should look at the number of articles that Richard Gadd and Jessica, the actress, have done and how Netflix and he have promoted this. Um, I think you should look at um, him saying, I am some sort of mental case and judge for yourselves because I can't change your mind on this. Um, I can just rebut what has been said. You need to make up your own minds. But my mind is made up. He's a liar. And my friends say likewise. 
Fiona Harvey, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Alrighty, I, I trust, I believe, I don't trust, but I believe the things that they're saying, uh, that the Netflix stuff is, is exaggerative. But regardless of that, whether or not, yes or no, I mean, I'm not gonna say f as, a, as a final statement that like one is right or the other one is wrong or yada yada. Wait for the evidence. Wait for there to be stuff that's actually provable and for there to be due process and for, you know, people to actually dig into the, the real, evidence of of what they they come across from them digging and looking for the evidence 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 in their words yeah man. anyways um and that should just be applied universally to anything right try to figure out what's going on don't just rely on he said she said long video i'm going to <laughs> invest or if i invest more in the gear to be able to do a comedy stuff like this so there's no like breaks and there's no issues so um Know what's going on, educate yourself, react to stuff uh, that happens in life because you have no control over that. You only have control over the reaction to these things that happen. Life is filled with all sorts of people that are out there to just destroy other people or look for any opportunity to get ahead in, in life or to benefit themselves. You can't expect anything better from people. People usually aren't, aren't good. They will do whatever it takes in order to do what they believe is good. And that's entirely interpretable. So, um, yeah. Stay safe. Don't stalk. That's...